This is a continuation of the last Exploring My Roots video. We're talking about my mom's side of the family. My dad was the youngest of 13 children. <clears throat> and so he was the prankster and the troublemaker. And uh, so one day, Grandma was um, snapping beans and stuff sitting at the table with her proper little apron on and everything. And Dad decided to give her a hug, but what he really did was get the strings to her apron and he tied her to the chair. <laughs> Which didn't go over very well with her. <laughs> and by the time she got um, out of it and she was picking up the chair and chasing him out the door, she threw the chair at him but missed and he thought that was the most hilarious thing he'd ever done. Yeah, oh. a good family story. Yeah, my dad, even to this, you know, later on in life, he was always doing something. Mom never worked, except for this one Christmas. Our friends um, had a store and some of the employees were sick. They asked her if she could just help out for three days. So we had a family meeting and they said, oh yeah, go ahead. And dad said, well, I'll go get the tree. And we always had a flocked white tree. So he went um, to a lot and he got a regular tree, brought it in the living room and proceeded to flock it. And there was white everywhere. <laughs> we had white curtains, white carpet, white furniture, um, white on the chandelier. And so it was a white um, Christmas. It was a, definitely a white <laughs> Christmas that I think mom saw red when she saw it. <laughs> and dad decided to panel the down the stairs back. Well, so he put the paneling on top of her, Duncan Fife, expensive, irreplaceable table, and sawed it off. Just another right, right. story. Saw so the, the panels and, and, and the, the part table. of the table. It's a Fred story. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect angle right there. Really? Okay. Oh. This is the house in Dallas that mom moved to from in the eighth grade? Yeah, we moved here in the eighth grade from Monmouth. Okay. And in the backyard here is where Steve and I got married and I was 19 and so was he and then I had a little sister that was four Vicky Vicky her name is Vicky and she was in the wedding and I was talking to her the other day about how young she was when we were getting married and she I said you were in kindergarten she goes I didn't go to kindergarten I go yes you did you were four or five and I knew you were headed to kindergarten. She goes, well, I went one day, but it was just too loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were, or she was in your wedding. Yes. When she was a little, like a ring bearer or something, right? Yes, like flower girl. Flower girl. When she got married to, to Greg, right. I was the ring bearer, because I was a little kid at that point. And I was a maid of honor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we kept it all in the family, but it was because we're, Mickey and I were 13 years apart, so it made a big difference. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah, it's interesting to see the old place. Yeah. So this is, is this where the, the tree got flocked inside, or is that, that in uh, yeah, Monmouth? Yeah, so like when you went in this door, and then see where this big window is? Yeah. There was a partition, well, it's like um, French doors. It went across and back. And that was just like a little place where you first went in. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was that. And then that was the dining room where the big chandelier was. Yeah. And then the next area was the kitchen. And one thing, um, the couple across the street over there, Ding and Marie, she... <laughs> <laughs> Ding and Marie. <laughs> she was... Um, you can't make these names she up. She was kind of the... We loved her, but 
One day she came over and she cut down the shrub in front of the um, kitchen window. Your guys a shrub? Our shrub. <laughs> because she couldn't see in well enough. She wanted to look in your window <laughs> to see what's going on. I know. She was hilarious. Oh my goodness. So. Well, it, it, lovely little uh, like kind of almost stained glass look on the windows there and uh -huh. wrought iron and you had the chandelier. Mm -hmm. It sounds like Grandma Barbara like nice things just not personal personal ornamentation maybe that's correct there's a great story about this theater behind us mom what do you yes tell this, me this, this is dallas oregon and this is the little theater that we have here right downtown and because of my mom's uh, religion we were not allowed to go to movies however my middle sister pam she didn't really like to go by the rules so she decided to go to the movie anyway. And it just so happened that Steve was walking by to go get something and he saw Pam and her friends going in. So he didn't think much about it. Came over to my house and dad was there and he said, oh, I just saw Pam. Oh, where did you see her? Well, she and her friend were going to the movie. Well, that didn't go over very well because dad knew the rule. So he got a flashlight and he um, went down to the theater and walked up and down the aisles calling for Pam. Pam, I know you're in here. Come on, you need to go home. Pam, I know you're here. Well, apparently she finally came out and they went home with nothing more to be said. <laughs> now, were you and Steve married at the time or was, were you just dating at this we point? We were just dating and he just came by. And uh, another story was when he would drop by and mom learned how to do a Italian cooking from, 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 his, from the Italian side of our family. And so she was always inviting Steve to stay and have spaghetti. Yeah, and he I would he would always turn her down but w that particular day dinner was almost ready and he couldn't really get out of it so he stayed for dinner and he was like he said this is so good and she goes well I've been inviting you a lot he goes well I thought you were having Franco-American in a can. <laughs> <laughs> but he was used to having for spaghetti. Okay, one last stop. This is the house that I moved to from Eugene in the fourth grade to. A lot of stories here. I remember building snowmen right over there. My bedrooms was, was first bedroom was on the right and then I moved over to the left a little bit later. In the back, there's a creek. We had ducks that would visit us. We called them Sarah and Stanley, and they came back each year for quite a while. I was here through high school. The, neighbor the neighborhood looks pretty much the same. It's interesting. Some places look very different to me after all these years. Some places don't. Originally, I had intended to close this video with just a couple cool stories from my oldest living relative. Well, that interview provided such a wealth of material. It's going to be its own quite long video. These last few clips are a teaser for that video and a fun way to end this one. Thank you for watching. I don't remember. The only horse and buggy I remember is there used to be a man used to come around selling produce. And <laughs> this story really happened. His horse died oh, no. in the middle of Nesquahone Street. And the cop came to direct the traffic that was going through, which was very light. And he, the cop said, will somebody help me move this horse and carriage 
because I don't know how to spell Nesquahoning Street. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a true I've heard story. That story. There's always something going on in our family. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a good family to grow up in. Mm -hmm. And we always helped with the ironing. And on Saturday morning, I know my job used to be to scrub the kitchen floor. <laughs> so we always had jobs. Only the girls? The, the guys didn't do much that I can remember. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't ever remember them cutting the grass or anything. My dad took care of the yard. Didn't the girls do everything for the boys, yeah. including iron their underwear? Yeah, they, that's, well, I didn't because I refused. <laughs> <laughs> I told my mother <laughs> one day, she said, you have to iron all the stuff, the shorts and all, and I said, Who's gonna see those? And she she said, Well when you when people come if they open the drawers, you oh. know, if they look nice, I said, people aren't supposed to come in your house and open that's when I got swatted. <laughs> making, they're making too much sense. And, I, and I'm like that today. If you open those drawers, you'd be amazed. <laughs> I think all three of those boys ended up in the Pacific fleet in the Navy of where they subsequently served. But the training was scattered across the country. Yeah. Hawaii, Rhode Island, the West yeah. Coast. I mean, it, it's, it's were, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they were stationed all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would they write letters home? Yeah, my mother used to get a lot of letters. In fact, our mailman got to be such a good friend. <laughs> That he used to come in and sit down and have coffee. <laughs> Here's the postcards and where's my cookies? <laughs> well, when my, you know, my mother used to make a cookie called, it's called Scott the Lodz. He was eating these cookies and <laughs> he had powdered sugar all over his coat. Yeah. But the mailman used to come and he'd sit for maybe an hour talking to my mother, <laughs> tell her about, you know, he'd tell her about what was in the letters and all that stuff. He was, he was reading the mail before he delivered it. <laughs> <laughs> he was a really nice man. He didn't live too far from us. He lived, he built a house at the top of Horseshoe Bend on um, Morgan's Hill. I'll chime in if necessary on a, on a detail about the, uh, about being in the mafia. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's, there's stories from this family. For I sure. He was not in the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> he was friends with mafia. Don't <laughs> stop talking about it. And you know Fred was on the Hornet when it got sunk. Hmm. I've heard I've that. I, I can't heard confirm that, that. that. That would have been the Battle of Midway. Now, I had heard it one time. He was on the Hornet when it got sunk, and he actually climbed up onto it like a dirigible type thing. Well, that's what was told to us. Well, then that I don't, I'm not here to discount it. Huh? Mm. So the Hornet was a, a ship? It was a aircraft carrier. carrier. Aircraft carrier, okay. Lost, it, I believe it was lost at the major right. battle of Midway which, in the Pacific Ocean, which is a turning point in the Pacific Theater yeah. War. Yeah. Well, the one time, this guy that lived by us, they used to call him Groundhog. He was walking down the street and Mike, you know, was talking to him. And he said, you know, Groundhog, I have a suit just like that. And the guy looked at him and he said, this, he said, well, for your brother, Fred just gave me this suit. <laughs> he, said, he said, I'm going to go out with some girl and he wanted me to look nice. So he got, gave me this suit. <laughs> and Mike said, well, that's my suit and I'd like to have it back. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing he used to do. He was very he, generous. Very generous with other people's things. <laughs> <laughs> and when we came back from the movie, we had to be there right after 9 o'clock because that's when the movie ended. And we sat in the living room. My mother sat with us. Oh. And that's the truth. <laughs> she was really strict with us. Mm -hmm. But I think if you have eight girls, you have to be. Yeah. I mean, if I had a girl today, I'd be really strict really. with her. <laughs> Nowadays, you really have to be. Do you remember what your mother said when you married? We're going to marry a non-Italian? My mother didn't want me to marry Frank. She wanted to marry Dominic Kapoor down the street. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know, maybe because he was Irish. <laughs> I, I thought she said something to the effect of a mixed marriage. Yeah, well, she did. Well, she she said, said, you know, you marry an Italian. I said, I don't want to marry an Italian. I want to marry this Irishman. <laughs> so you have a little bit of Fred in you. <laughs> we all have a little bit of Fred in us. <laughs> Is he the worst of them all? I think he was the most trying one. <laughs> but I, you know what? I think deep down he was my dad's favorite. Frank, when Frankie was born, we lived there for yeah. a while. Yeah. I was about four when he passed away, wasn't I? Yeah. Well, I remember him almost like the scene from The Godfather where the He's playing with his God's his grandson in the garden, and he because he had that big garden. Yeah. And I would come home and look for him. I always remember one time. I don't know what you did, and my dad said to you, "Do you know what's going to happen if I take my belt off?" Oh no. <laughs> and you said, "Yeah, your pants will fall down." <laughs> and he never forgot that. <clears throat> He said, he's a smart boy. <laughs> well, we used to go to New York about once a month. Because he had that, well, he had that pass. So rail Sunday pass. mornings. You had a rail pass. Yeah, what would Sunday you do? Sunday mornings, we'd just go down and get on the train and go to New York. Mm -hmm. And do what? To go out to eat or just <clears throat> yeah. hang out? And then... Yeah, we'd eat breakfast when we got there. Mm -hmm. Go to church, walk around, go to different places, you know. Mm -hmm. Took the ferry out to the Statue of Liberty. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. All that good stuff. 